In this video, we're going to show you what plants to grow for the month of March. And we're going to start right now. What's going on, YouTube gardeners? My name is Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel. If this is your first time to this channel and you're timid about gardening and would like to learn different DIY projects for your garden, or would even like to learn some of the recipes from the vegetables from our backyard garden, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and making sure you hit the bell icon so that way you get notified when we upload our videos weekly. After watching this video, you're gonna learn what plants to grow in March for zone 8A. Now let's get growing. So the month of March is not just for Mark Magnus for NCAA basketball. It's also getting ready for spring, a gardener's best friend. I'm gonna give you a rundown of what plants to go from, from flowers to herbs, to what's still to grow for a good early spring crop and getting ready for the summer crop. I'm gonna let you know whether you can plant them inside or direct sow outside, depending on your zones. Start off with the flowers. You can start with the asters. Uh, we're doing a few asters already. We started last month. Like for instance, we did a star C mix and we did a star C mix and a China ester blend. We already did a started these uh, last month probably do another succession plant of this month uh, the next one is alyssum we have the uh, sweet alyssum regular sweet alyssum that we already started and the royal carpet alyssums uh, these are the royal carpet alyssums if y'all haven't seen our videos previously our color theme for this year will be purple or different uh, color renditions of purple uh, we already started with uh, borage. Uh, you could plant these direct so outside since the weather's kind of warming up. And these are from MR Gardeners that we already started up with that. We'll probably do another succession plant of those since those are the petals on those are edible along with the stems. Uh, then the next one we have is catnip. Uh, we have catnip already. We're going to probably do another uh, planting of those and with those you can do either outside direct sow or start indoors. Uh, Calicias, I'll put a description right there. We're not doing those but if you want to do those you can do those indoors, start those indoors. Anacias, in, in, in chainas, I don't know how to say it, we just call it purple cone flower. <laughs> Echinacea. Echinacea, the Mrs. Necker Gardener says. We started a few of those. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more of those. We're also going to, once we get the beds ready, we're going to start, you can direct sow those outside and plant those, start those inside for the month of March. Uh, Latanas, uh, we're, you could do those inside. We're not doing any of those. We're doing some nasturtiums. Uh, doing somewhere around here I got some nasturtiums you could do those uh, inside or outside we're doing two uh, kinds of those and then salvias we're doing some of those you could do those inside as well uh, uh, sunflowers we're doing uh, two types of sunflowers we're doing the uh, Moulin Rouge sunflowers and then the Mrs. Nicky Gardner got these from, where'd you get these from, babe? It's a gardening supply store. Some gardening supply store. They're called uh, Giant Sunflowers. Uh, so we're gonna try to grow those uh, and everything. Uh, then we got the Verbanias. Those are gonna be, you can start those inside. Uh, we're not doing any of those. The Vin, Vincus, uh, we're not doing any of those. Even we used to do those inside. Zanias, we're doing a lot of zanias. Uh, we already done some. We're gonna do some more this month. These are the cut and come along again. We got some of those uh, from last month. The purple prints we started last month. And these is what I'm gonna start this month. These are the peppermint stick mix. 
Uh, these look pretty interesting. They got like different colors and they got uh, freckles of different colors on there from red to purple and white. So those are gonna be interesting. And then uh, we're gonna go off into the perennials. Stay tuned, we're gonna go grab those. All right, now some of these uh, perennials you have to start in the refrigerator for at least about anywhere from six to 10 days to kind of get them in that dormant mode, to break them out of that dormant mode when you either start them indoors or outdoors. Uh, some of these that we're gonna be doing is the butterfly weed. These are the orange varieties. Let's put those over here. Uh, these are the nasturtiums I was talking about. You wanna start these indoors in the refrigerator. And these are the Jewel Blend. These are from the Botanical Interests. Uh, we have some uh, Marigold, which are annuals, but you still want to start these indoors to kind of get them out of their dormancy. These are the Marigold French Blends. These are the Nasturtium Alaskan Mix. Now, the good thing about Nasturtiums is their petals and their uh, leaves are edible. Uh, so that's uh, multi-purpose. Not only do they bring pollinators to your garden, but you can also eat them as well. Well, the plant, not the pollinator. And then we got the uh, swamp milkweed from the MI Gardeners. Uh, those look pretty, they got the purple in there. They kind of go well with the purple and orange. And then we got some butterfly flower from Barry Morse. And we had started some of these last year. These were the uh, the passion flowers. Now with these, I didn't know that they uh, they grow like a vine. So if you have some type of trellis, it'd be best to use these around a trellis or some type of pole. Uh, these are the nasturtium black velvet. I thought these would kind of go very well with the uh, sunflower moulin rouge or play an offset of that. Uh, the other uh, flowers that we have that we're gonna be growing are, I'm just gonna pull all these right here. The bee balm, the, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, we got the Abala's uh, Johnny Jump Up. Those are starting to sprout back. Then we got the Hummingbird uh, Bee Balm, and these are good to repel mosquitoes. These were some free uh, seeds from uh, Baker's Creek. Uh, these are bee balms, some more bee balms, some eucalyptus plants, the Columbine. columbine. Uh, these we planted last year, and they're starting to now sprout up uh, in a planter that we had. Uh, these are the alyssum golds that we have, alyssum sweet alyssums that we already growing. These are the uh, bachelor buttons from in my garden, uh, in my gardeners. These are the mixed varieties. Once again, the purple cone flower and these I like these. These are kind of of the daisy family. These are the uh, black eye, black eye Susan. Uh, we started some of these last month. Might try to do some more of these this month as well. Uh, those are the flowers. Uh, now we're going to jump off into the. Now we're going to jump into the uh, herbs. Uh, we got the rosemary. You can direct sow these or uh, start them inside. These take a. They have a long germination rate. Uh, so they take a while to germinate, so be patient with these. On um, the plant here, it said just the days to emerge, anywhere from 15 to 30 days. So those just take a long time to germinate. We have some dill. Uh, we did a lot of dill this uh, fall and uh, spring of last year. Uh, we got plenty of basil. We got regular lemon basil. Uh, mammoth basil, sweet basil, Thai basil, red Reuben basil, dark opal basil. So as you can see, we have a lot, it's about six variety of basils that we're gonna be doing this year. Uh, the missus makes some awesome uh, 
pesto with this and what else do you use, normally use these with? Um, I usually make pesto sauces and freeze, freeze it. Yeah, so we're gonna definitely do well with these. Uh, these are a warm uh, tolerant plant, a uh, herb. Uh, once the season starts to get a little bit cooler, they kind of die off. So beware of that. Uh, we got lemon balm, where you can use a, it's a medicinal plant or put them in uh, like a herb tea. Regular mint, uh, thyme. These are very drought tolerant. Uh, these take a long time to germinate as well. Take about 20 days. Uh, cilantro, cilantro or coriander. Uh, it's best to get these out now and put them under a shaded area because they don't thrive as well in direct sun as for hot, uh, very hot climate areas. Uh, so be beware of that. Parsley does uh, well, okay, in the summertime. It thrives very well in the uh, cooler climates. So those are all for the herbs. Now we're gonna jump into the stuff that you can still grow in the, in the springtime or in the shade area. Mostly those are gonna be like your celery. Uh, you could do like the Utah Talls or, or anything of that nature. Don't think we're gonna do any celery this year. I haven't had a good luck with that and I just don't wanna I might do it later in the fall era. We'll see how that goes. Kale, we are gonna do a lot of kale. Uh, where's my kale at? We're gonna have the, uh, oh, here we go. We got the Bates Blue Scots Curl Kale from Emma Gardner. You can do these uh, inside or outside. The Lacinato kale or dinosaur kale, you can do those outside or inside. The red Russian kale and the scarlet kale. Uh, with those, you can start, like I say, inside or outside. We're gonna do all varieties. We started some of those last month and we're gonna start some more again this month. So that way next month we'll be ready to uh, go outside. The next ones, uh, we're gonna jump to are the lettuce and right here. We have a lot of varieties of lettuce from the Butterhead lettuce from Botanical Garden. Uh, you could start these outside or inside. The red romaine lettuce, you could start these inside or outside. These are from MR Gardener. The Black Seed Simpson. At first, I didn't like these, but they kind of grew on to me by the texture and how well they uh, uh, are disease hard, uh, deterrent from getting around. The only thing after you let it grow for a while, the aphids will come, so you will have to spray. We'll do a video later on that how to deter pests from uh, getting on your crops. The freckle romaine lettuce. Uh, from MR Gardener. These look pretty interesting. They have basically a lettuce with red freckles, kind of have a, like I said, the color theme of a purple rendition of that. Uh, the Radicchio, Radicchio, this is from Baker's Creek. Those will be pretty good. I like the color on that. The Red Sail Lettuce Leaf from Botanical Gardens. And once again, you can grow these, you can start these either outside or inside, depending on what zone you're in. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, most of these seeds will have a time, a zone area, when's the best time to grow it, where you can ask your nursery of what zone that you're in, when's the best time to grow your crops. The next plant we're gonna go on to are the mustards or the collard greens. Uh, that was in there. You got your lettuce, which should have been the lettuce outside or inside. All right, so we're gonna go with the mustard red giant. Uh, we have, these are from Botanical Entrance. I'm gonna probably do some of these in our community garden. I love the color on these. So we're gonna try those in the garden. Um, these are the Tokyo mustards uh, from MI Gardener. I'm gonna probably do one or two at the community garden and about four here. 
maybe two at our garden just to see how they taste before we uh, try to do more of those. These are a Japanese mustard. These are the tot, tot soy by in my gardener. Probably once again, probably do two at our community garden, two here, just to see how the tastes are. And then you get your regular greens from your mustard greens from uh, Ferry Morris, your turnip greens from Ferry Morris, and your collard greens. Uh, these I'm going to probably be doing a lot of because if you looked at my last video, uh, I'll post the link right there. Uh, we did an interview with my dad. He enjoys a lot of these uh, collards, turnips, and mustard greens. So we're probably going to be growing a few here, starting them here, and transferring them uh, over to his garden next month. Next, we're going to go to the peas and the bean, the lagoon. We already started some of these dragon tongue uh, beans. Uh, they're basically, they have the uh, regular waxy beans with the, once you open up the shell or the skins of it, they have like a purple hue to it. We got a few of those. We got the blue shelling peas by In My Garden. And we got the Royal Burgundy by Botanical Interest. And then we got the Jade Bush Bean. And these are also by Botanical Interest. And then we have the Sugar Snap Peas by Ferry Morris. Both of these you can start inside and transfer uh, later on outside, uh, depending on your, your climate. Uh, then we're gonna go to the cabbage. Uh, we're gonna do cabbage for my dad will like a few cabbage my uh, son would just told me that he was interested in doing cabbage along with my godson uh, was also interested in doing cabbage so we're going to be doing a lot of cabbages here i can tell uh, we're going to do some uh, brussels sprouts here and some uh, bok choy the tok choy kind the pop choy and the Napa cabbage. These are the slow boat Napa cabbage. Now with these cabbage, you wanna put them in a low shaded area or a cool area where it gets probably anywhere from four to six uh, hours of sun, not direct sun, otherwise they'll bolt and just kind of change the taste of them. Uh, and you, you can start those directly outside as well. So next, we're gonna take a break and go on to what the plant for the summer. All right, uh, before we jump into the, the summer plants, we've got one more plant for the cold uh, carrots and onions. Good time to start those. You can start your carrots outside, you can start your onions outside. Uh, here. Then you're gonna to go to your spinach we got different varieties of spinach. we got the Bloomingsdale, the mustard spinach. Those seem pretty interesting. I'm interested to see how those are. And I'm not sure how to say these, so I'll put a little description somewhere here or here of how to say these. Monstru de Barifle spinach. And the only reason why I put these on there because they they grow very quick. They grow within 60 days. So by that time, you know, get uh, the, the summer or the hot temperature around here will be here and you can harvest those unless you want to grow these uh, once again in a shaded or light partial sun area of anywhere from four to six hours of sunlight. So now we're going to go on to the plants that love heat that will take a while to germinate and to go. Start with your hot peppers. You got your regular jalapeno peppers, the pasaya peppers, I guess how you say it. The habanera peppers. The Anaheim uh, chili peppers. The ancho grande peppers. And the cayenne long stem peppers. Some of these are from M.I. Gardner, the rest are from Botanical Interest, and the burpees. 
The reason why you want to start the, actually we started some of these last month uh, because they take a long time to germinate and get ready. By the time it's ready to, from the last frost date, they're going to be ready to put in ground. Uh, we're going to do another succession uh, planting of these so that way we can continue the harvest from there. These are going to be the sweet peppers, uh, which we have the big red sweet peppers from MI Gardener the Purple Beauty Sweet Pepper from M.I. Gardener. I don't know why that was in there. The Chocolate Beauty Sweet Pepper. We got a lot of these uh, Sun Brights that we're growing. Might be have to give some of these away, but these are from M.I. Gardener as well. The Corabelle Sweet Pepper, the Orange Variety from M.I. Gardener. The Hungarian Yellow sweet pepper from M.I. Gardener. The shashito pepper from M.I. Gardener. And these are from Baker's Creek. Uh, this one was, I believe, was a free seed packet. So I'm gonna probably grow some of these at our community garden along with at the house. Probably do some pickling with these or uh, have the wife make some uh, chow chow. Uh, and then we got the pepper bull nose. Uh, we'll prop these. I think we're gonna keep these to ourselves at the house. If you like jalapenos but you don't like the heat, you can do the nano peppers from Baker's Creek. They're not as hot. Uh, these are from Botanical uh, Interest. These are just regular uh, bell peppers. Uh, my dad was uh, wanting to do some bell peppers, so we're going to grow some extra ones for him. And, that, and since he likes to give some of his peppers away, give those to him to give away. Uh, next, we're going to go with some of the other nightshades, like the eggplants. We got two different types of eggplants from Baker's Creek that we're going to be doing. I might do one or two of these at the community garden. Uh, we'll see, but these are the Antigias and the Indorine purple stripe ones. My dad was actually interested in growing these regular Black Beauty eggplants. So we're gonna try to grow some of these for him. To, uh, he probably wind up giving them away. We'll see. Uh, also, we're gonna do some okra, he was interested in doing some okra. So what we have is some okra from um, In My Gardener and from Barry Morris. Uh, we got the red burgundy from In My Gardener and we got the common ones, the Clemson spineless ones from Barry Morris. Then we're gonna go to the squashes real quick. We're gonna do some zucchinis, some squash, some gray zucchinis, some straight neck squash. Uh, these, this squash, gray squash is from Ferry Morris. These uh, squash, zucchini and squash are from Murray, Moro, Moro, Moro Sea Company. Uh, we'll see how these go. These are very organic and I like what they their, their mission statement is. They basically, for every seed that you buy, they uh, give a packet of seeds away to a, a fortunate uh, cause. Uh, these squashes is from In My Gardener. These are the straight neck squash from In My Gardener. And I'm actually gonna probably do some um, these. Uh, these were very popular towards the end of the, I've been seeing a lot of the YouTube gardeners grow. These are the cucumelon, the gherkins. Uh, I guess you can uh, pickle these or re eat them right off of the vine. They're supposed to be a, a sour, uh, sour taste to them. So we'll see how those go. And the last but not least, the tomatoes. What I'm going to be growing. And with the tomatoes, we have the determinate and indeterminate. Uh, with the... Um, with the indeterminate, they only grow about three, about three to four feet high. And once they do their fruit, they die off. So you wanna do a succession planting of these. 
Uh, with the determinant, they can grow up as big as eight feet tall and they continue to produce and once they eat fruit, they still produce the fruit from there. So with these, we're gonna probably put in the container and with these, we'll probably grow out. So for here, we got the In My Gardener's Vintage Vine that we started last month. We'll probably do another one here. Uh, the Aunt from In My Gardener, the Aunt Ruby Green Tomatoes that we started last month. We're going to grow again this month. The Dr. Watch Yellow Tomatoes that we're going to, we started last month. We're going to do this month from In My Gardener. The Stripe Roma Tomatoes from In My Gardener. And these are from Baker's Creek. These are the Wagner Blue Green Tomatoes. And these are the classic beef tomatoes. Uh, Greg from uh, Rusty Root Gardener, he's going to do another competition with Callie Kim. And they invited uh, Jess from Roots and Refuge and also with the other uh, YouTube creators, uh, gardeners, to do another beef steak tomato challenge. Basically, who can grow the biggest tomato, beef steak tomato. And I think they're also gonna do who can produce, uh, have the most yield off of a tomato as well. Uh, next and last are our tomatoes, uh, and the, these are the indeterminate ones that doesn't grow as tall. These are the Gardener's Delight, basically a cherry tomato. These are Tiny Tim's uh, from Emma Gardener. Uh, Callie Kim, she loves these, so we're gonna try those out. The Mrs. saw these, so we got these from Walmart. These are the Super Sweet 100 Hybrid. Uh, these are from Burpees. And this one I thought was cool. These are the Baker's Creek uh, tomato, atomic uh, grape tomatoes. Uh, they come in different colors, and but they're supposed to be like a nice, uh, not as acidy uh, taste uh, to these. It's supposed to be like a kind of a sweet taste. So I'm interested in seeing how those go. We'll probably do a lot of containers in, into these. So hopefully after watching this video, you will learn what to grow in the month of March. Now, I know this was kind of long, but as you can see, there was a lot to cover. Uh, so hopefully I try to get through it as much as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you have any family members or friends that are interested in gardening and doesn't know what to grow for the month of March, share this video with if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that way you can notify when we upload our videos weekly. Now, we don't post on these channel daily, so make sure you subscribe to our Instagram page and also our Facebook page. I'll just put the link down below so that way you can join them. And as always, let's grow together.